your words are powerful your words can kill your words can heal your words can lift someone up your words can tear down your words can build you need to be so careful because the thong james terry says it's so small but it, it can light fire it, it can set the whole country on fire hi welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel i am om now in today's video i want to talk about the power of your words i am reading this book that is making me understand the power of the subconscious mind and that is the name of the book so i realized that my conscious mind which is the words that i say and the things that i proclaim are actually what informs my subconscious and my subconscious is so powerful that that is where my belief is molded and which means whatever i say is not just a mere word i came to the point of realizing by studying scripture that there are no idle words that is why a great preacher said say what you mean and mean what you say because your words are powerful of course we know the scripture that says that the power of death and life is in the tongue boop, boop. <laughs> don't mind me i realized that there are some fun things i used to say especially when I was in secondary school, we would make fun of someone, mock someone, belittle someone, and that would make us laugh, <laughs> uh, like hysterically. So it's kind of like when we mock someone and belittle someone, that's what we call joking and jesting. We are just jesting, but you don't know what that is doing to the soul of someone. And when we are being mocked, that was why even in the midst of us doing those jesting, someone would get angry and want to pick a fight because it's not just a joke. It gets into them. It's an unhealthy suggestion that you're making. It's deeper than what I used to take it for. And I realized that as I was growing up, when the teaching was made about, you know, you don't have to jest or joke again. And I was like, so what do we make fun of? Are we going to take everything too serious or be too serious? Don't we laugh again? And I've come to a point, place of realizing that there are healthy and witty and creative ways of making jokes and jestings without having to be that of mocking someone or belittling someone the part of belittling people to have fun or to make a laugh out of that is something that somehow it's a sickness inside of us like we love to see other people belittled so that we just laugh <laughs> so you want to mock them body shame them whatever you see in them you make fun of that just to make them feel bad. I'm just coming to the realization of that in recent times to even give a thought about growing up and just accepting that culture of mocking and belittling people because even from home, it's a culture of things that is that happens. Your dad will just make fun of you or mom will make fun of you or someone will make fun of you or something like that. And it's kind of like we were so based on the negative but there are positive ways of maybe constructively telling someone things that maybe they don't they're doing that you don't like not like trying to belittle them to make them feel bad i'm just talking about the power of the words and how it can affect people how it can even affect you yourself and how my words are so potent to me which is now teaching me how to use my words so the first thing you need to do is to avoid mocking and belittling if you have been doing that i'm just urging you you need to desist from it if you are someone that you say you're a funny person you love humor then look for witty and clever humors observe things that you can use to you know make a joke about not people not by mocking or belittling people because your words are powerful your words can kill your words can heal. Your words can lift someone up. Your words can tear down. Your words can build. You need to be so careful because the thong, James Terry says, it's so small, but it, it can light fire. It, it can set the whole country on fire. That is why people use the tongue, gossip people, tear people down, destroy relationships, destroy families, and whatever. And Lucky Dube said something. If you can say something good about somebody, oh, shut up. And the scripture says that even a fool, if he's too quiet, <laughs> he could be regarded as a wise person. You need to be careful. If you don't have positive words to say, the best thing to do is to close your mouth. Shut up could sound a little harsh, but close your mouth. Even if your tongue wants, if you close your mouth, it's not going to say anything. Even if you think it, 
keep it in your mind and then try to help yourself change that mindset so that you will not tear people down because your words are powerful the next point is that there are no jokes in the spirit realm there are no jokes the spirit realm do not recognize well i was just joking it was just a joke it doesn't recognize a joke or what was a joke or what is regarded as a joke it's you that recognizes that and you even if somebody is making fun of you it's not a joke because somehow why do you go home and start thinking about that and start reminiscing look at yourself in the mirror and start looking at what that person was making fun of or mocking you about like maybe feel bad about that then it's not a joke it's going to affect your identity so we have to come to a place of becoming more intentional with our lives that's why scripture says don't use foul or abusive language let everything you say be good and helpful so that your word will be an encouragement to those who hear them again in colossians 4 6 let every word you speak every word not some not majority not minority but every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity for then you will be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks about your faith sometimes you can say i'm just someone that i'm just raw i'm just raw like if you can't say the truth in love then don't say anything because you can destroy someone you need to learn how to say the truth in love and that's not even about being diplomatic or whatever you can say you're doing this to your loved one and you say you love them and doing it because i love them you love them you can be raw with them but the truth you are speaking is in a way that they can receive it because you can tell someone what you call truth and it's actually true but then the way you say it the tone you say it, the manner of your approach to the person makes the person not to be able to receive that they will become defensive they want to fight back you're attacking me so i gotta fight back we need to come to a place of recognizing our words are powerful and then there are no idle words there is no idle word number three speak life this is kind of like telling you be objective about this be, be proactive about this speak life instead of speaking death instead of speaking negativity this is not even about just saying be positive because a lot of people can say positive things and always go about being motivational but then deep down in their subconscious they don't believe anything that they say if you are saying it to yourself believe it so that it can drop down to your subconscious and you believe this is your whole person speak life faith call it those things that be not as though they were like you believe in god that it's not nature it's god Nature won't bring what you believe to come to pass. It is God. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. I will read John 6. John 6, 63. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus said, the spirit alone quickens. The spirit alone is what gives eternal life. Your effort, your human thinking, nature can do nothing. So if you say, oh, just believe it in your subconscious and nature will just bring things together. You are talking about faith and you're talking about God. You believe it because your subconscious is now saying the prayer of what you believe. Because that's the real prayer. It's not what you just say out in your mouth when you don't believe it in your heart. If you open your mouth and declare that Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's where salvation comes. You say it, you believe it. Same applies to other things in your life you say things and you believe it in your heart you ask god for something and you believe it in your heart you, without doubting you will receive what you ask for it is the equation of faith not equation of nature oh somehow nature brings it together it's faith it's called faith in the bible god makes it happen does the bible say if god bless you because some people will say if god bless me i will do this no why not change your language when god blesses me or when the blessings of God in my life comes to manifestation. Not if God bless me. As if I'm not sure. I don't know. What did the word of God say? God says, I will bless you. God's word has so much blessings for us. And you have to read those blessings and accept them. And believe them. Not like if God bless me. Scripture did not say so. So you have to go with the word of God. And scriptures in Romans 8.32 says, Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? Since God did not spare Christ. He did not even say if. I know some translations use if. But God has already given us Christ. So we, now we can use the word since God did not spare Christ, allowed Christ to die for us. God gave us the best gift to die for our sins, to save us. What else can we ask God in this world? Prosperity? healing 
provision, protection. Is protection higher than Christ? No, in Christ, we have all these things. Since he gave us Christ, he can't deny us anything else. We just need to open our hearts to believe. God will protect me. God will provide for me. God's blessing is upon me. Like, speak life. Your words are powerful. Use them the right way. Because it can, it can give you the consequence any which way. If you use it negatively, you still receive it powerful. But if you use it positively, which is better for you, you receive the consequence, the powerful consequence of your words, the words of life, the words of proclaiming the promises of God and believing in your heart. All oh, your promises are yes and amen. And I hope that this video will help you. And let me know in the comments how this video has spoken to you. It has really spoken to me because I am now reconsidering my words, my thought line, and even the jokes that I laugh to and the jokes that I make. Because we can go out there in the world and be like, ah, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Of course, now that everybody is sensitive and everything is sensitive, you just can't go and make a joke anyhow. Because you make a joke anyhow, you might be in jail. <laughs> so the reality is these words are powerful and you need to speak life. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I am OM. Let me know in the comment section what you have picked from today's video and do not forget to like this video to share it to subscribe to this channel and to watch the next video i believe you'll be blessed watching